Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Married at First Sight All Star Panel. I'm Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jackie. And we got Tommy from August Love Story. Man, y'all wish me uh, look. I thought I was on live. I'm gonna tell you, I ain't gonna, I ain't going trip. I thought I was on live. I messed up. Um, and it is what it is at this point. All right. And so we had to start all over again. What's up, Tommy? How you feeling, brother? I'm good, man. What about y'all? Man, doing all right, man. Can't complain. Everything is all well, man. Everything is well. Uh, you know, just hey, been rushing, got some things going on, but it, it's all well. It's all yeah. definitely good. All good, man. Yeah, it's good, good, man. But hey, this married at first sight was a is one for ages, man. Got a lot to talk about, lot to discuss. Uh, man, let's get to it. Let's get to married at first sight. Um, let's. I want to start with this one. Um, while I try to fix some things, I know we look red, so I'm gonna try to adjust some things here. But um, uh, let's start with Miguel and Lindy and McGindy. <laughs> and McGindy. McGindy. Yeah, we'll start with you, Tommy. All right. Uh, I ain't really write much about them. I'm trying to pull up my notes here. They named this baby McGindy, which is interesting. They just trying to make each other be a part of the name. Um, I found it interesting that they like really they didn't talk to that uh Dr. Pia, but then they also like have the least amount of problems. And I find that interesting just because it's like I didn't expect that at all. Like, you know, I expected them to have some problems and especially with Miguel, I expected him to just be concerned about this eight weeks process. So, um, yeah, it seemed like Lindy took a back seat to the parenting. Um, like, cause every time we saw them and the baby, the baby was with, um, Miguel. Um, I don't know, you know, like I like for me, I'm looking at it. It's like, yep, I'm going through that. Yep, I'm going through that. Yeah, I'm going through that too. You know, like up in the in the middle of the night. But majority of the things are Artika is or is dealing with those things because she's breastfeeding. Um, so it's like the roles were completely flipped from my reality to their reality, and I'm looking at it from that from that standpoint and. I'm like, dog, well, what is Lindy going to do? You know, how is she, you know, being a, a partner in this in this, and how that's going to uh, go with them? So, um, allegedly, uh, Artika is, is in the chat for August Love Story. She's with the baby, you know. So, um, you know, that's, what, that's the thing that I was looking at. I was just like, for me, it would be Lily would be more so with me than Quad would, you know, as the newborn and stuff like that. So I just found that to be interesting. Um, yeah, it's weird that they don't have problems, you know, like that's what they because this is the first time a baby was introduced. That's something I wouldn't want to did in in this experiment. Like, don't give me no baby. <laughs> like I'm, I would have did what uh. Mitch said, take the batteries out. I mean, like, put this baby to the side. I'll take the batteries out. Because it's, it's like, it's just added pressure, you know, at this point. And it's like, what are you testing me for that for? Give me another challenge because we're not perfect, you know. So, um, yeah, I really didn't have much for them this, this week. So, yeah, that, I mean, to me, I thought the baby situation, I think I said on a review, I thought it was interesting. I mean, if you're going to do the babies, I think I'm like Mitch. I think you do it for everybody, right? Yeah. If you're going to do it, just don't do it for one couple. Do it for everybody. At least everyone can see, you know what, we may not want kids right now, right? Look at Stasha, who wants kids right away. Uh, look at Nate, who, you know, who's kind of on the fence. And, and when you deal with Mitch and Kristen and their lifestyles, uh, Miguel and Lindy allegedly don't have an issue. They got issues. It's big issues. Uh, I think the experts are over overlooking the fact that some of the issues or they don't think they're compared when compared to everybody else's issues it's not that big um but there's 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 a, there are issues there because right now i think miguel is quiet because he just doesn't want her to go off right now and that's that's an issue because now let's find out what triggers you what's your triggers what make you go off and when you do go off how am i going to handle you going off because that may be an issue later on in, in the relationship so you know i'm taking care of the baby i think somebody said in our chat or in one of our um comments was miguel used to acting anyway so this baby situation was like a dungeon and dragon thing and he was just acting being acting like being daddy right <laughs> he's used to acting doing things uh in that nature so um i think they do have issues um you know the financial situation i think it's going to be an issue for them 
uh, later on. I think their issue also is to her way that she communicates to him when she's upset. I don't think she knows how to deal with it and how to handle um, frustration and adversity. To me, I think that's going to be a big issue for her as well. But as of right now, compared to the other couples, they don't have the issues that everyone else has. Nah, I was I was really surprised. I was really surprised. I said, how did we get to this point with them? Because it does seem like they got the least issues. But it was feeling like at first they had the most. Well, not the, the most, but they had quite a few. Um, uh, the one thing that you commented on when it came to McGinley, which um, it's not unusual, but it kind of is. Like, I was like surprised that Miguel took the baby with him to the guys thing. And he go Glenn tell some, I mean, guys, dads take care of it. I was like, they do. But for most of the time, uh, unless is something that the mama can't take the baby to in particular um moms be having the babies not that dad can't but yeah i was like and she even said for her she mentioned in passing that she would be breastfeeding so i'm thinking why don't you act like it now but she act like she was bottle feeding and take the baby with you and he didn't do bad he didn't do bad but I, I would wonder, like, is this is this a reflection of what it would be like for real? Because she, I'm with Tommy. She really didn't do much of anything. She didn't do much of anything when it came to the baby. So, no, I mean, think about it. And in, in, in this baby didn't even come out of her, so I can't. She can't use the excuse. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've been through a long labor. I've been through all this. I have, you know, had a C-section or whatever the case may be. She can't even mention none of that, right? Um, so when Miguel doing it, I just think Miguel just have a better motherly instinct. <laughs> then, parental. Let's uh, call it a parental. Uh, parental instinct, right? Uh, parental instinct than Lindy. You know, Lin I think Lindy has a little bit of fear back there to see how she was raised and how mom would raise her and how she would deal with it. Um, you know, Miguel's, I mean, I understand the night person get up in the middle of the night. I got up in the middle of the night, right? I understand that. You know, sometimes uh, you have to do that because my wife in the middle of the night coming off a the surgery stuff she had was tired. It is what it is, right? So we, so you have to understand that. But throughout the day, I think Miguel was the one who changed the baby's diaper, right? Mm -hmm. And she didn't even change the diaper. I would expect to at least see her try to change the diaper. So it makes you go and question this. This is uh, something I really thought about. Did she not play with dolls growing up, right? Because of her strict lifestyle, because of her strict upbringing. I don't know. I was, I'm not a seven-day Adventist. I don't understand. But she mentioned a lot of things she didn't do growing up that she couldn't do. Could they not play with dolls and not deal with that aspect of dolls? Because now it's like you want a baby. You know, there's some religions that don't allow kids to do that. So maybe she doesn't have that parental instinct inside of her uh, and that she ha that she's seen. She's seen people have babies, but she just never had the opportunity to work with kids and she don't have it there. I don't know. I kind of took it the other way. Um, maybe she doesn't have like the motherly instinct, but I also felt like. Miguel had a takeover kind of spirit. Like, I'm going to take the baby. Let me do. I think that's what some of it was, too. But um, no. was she the youngest? Her brother was older than her, right? I think so. Is she the baby? So maybe she hasn't, you know, cared for a baby. I was thinking about how serious they was taking the, the situation, too. Right. You know, because it's like Miguel sitting over there playing with the baby's head and everything. Like, I like. There's certain things you can't do with the baby, like a real baby, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I just, I just think that's what it was. It was like how serious they were taking it, and Miguel is looking at it because it's funny to see him playing with a dog. Or I don't want to say playing with a dog, but you know, <laughs> sitting up there holding a a baby doll as if it was his child. Mm -hmm. You know, and they named the dog McGindy. Yes. So was it a boy or a girl? I, I was just, I think it was supposed to be a boy. Don't get me to lie. I think it was supposed uh, to be a boy, but something. with McGindy, I don't, I don't, I don't, don't know. Don't get me to lie at all. Right, right. Yeah. So, <laughs> but you know, somebody made it. You know, uh, Miguel does do all the cooking. We see Miguel cook. I ain't never yeah, seen Lindy cook. We do. Miguel does the cleaning. Uh, what does <laughs> basically what does Lindy offer? And that's why I said the sex. Right? Is that all she offered to them? Bring it to the table. And she that's does the sex in it. I'm just asking, what, what, what is Lindy bringing, right? Miguel's taking care of the child. He's he's cleaning. He's cooking. She come home. Is he? And you know, what is he? What is he bringing? And is that sustainable? 
You know, no. that's another thing too. It's like that, oh, yeah. like being that unbalanced. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Is that how long is that sustainable for? Before it's like, oh, I'm tired of this. You know. Mm-hmm. So, so I, I I get the experiment, but it's it's like during this time, I wouldn't have wanted to do that. Right. Just because it's like so many other things we could focus on. Like we never talked about finances or we haven't talked about finances yet, which is a, you know, a major thing, you know, mm-hmm. um, the intimacy part, like going past physical intimacy. Cause I think that's what the episode was about this week. Right. Mm-hmm. Intimacy mm-hmm. and trust. Um, they were, they were trying to say they didn't have an issue with intimacy, but I, I like take it a step further. We talked about intimacy on our podcast coming out Wednesday plug. Um, so <laughs> drop that plug, <laughs> right? Right, <laughs> so it's like you go, you go past just the physical intimacy part and start talking about the, the you know, the intellectual intimacy or the emotional intimacy parts of things and and get into that. But yeah, but how, but how did they fix that though? Remember, they had all these uh intimate issues, right? Leading up to during the honeymoon and after the honeymoon, Miguel begging for sex and begging for sex, and and she's giving in to give Miguel sex. So now is it all of a sudden she just freely and willingly giving it now? Uh, and Miguel, yeah, of course. When, when Miguel's no longer asking, and there's no more angst at begging for it. So now she just, I right, I want sex today, Miguel, and and she's like, okay, yeah, that, and that's the crazy part. It's like we don't see their resolve in anything, right. You know, so it's like everybody else is going through these issues, but these guys right here, sunshine and rainbows, mm-hmm. you know, and that doesn't make sense to the uh, naked eye. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's weird with them, and so we just, I mean, hopefully they can continue to stay, sustain whatever they got going on. Yeah, um, and keep it keep it low key and fly underneath the radar. But sometimes when you see relationships fly underneath the radar, that's when you get surprised on decision. You know what I'm saying? So they, yeah. Yeah. Iris and Keith kind of fly. Yeah, Iris and Keith kind of flew underneath the radar, right? And on decision day, Keith said no. You know, so it's yeah, like, I he, remember that. Yeah, so you, I mean, you think everything's going well, but the person, and we know Miguel was already thinking, you know, it may not last past eight weeks. I know he told her he loved her last, you know, in the last episode, but with him, if she has one more outburst, that could change quickly. Yeah, he could, you know, with him, he said, "You, I'm out." So that, so I mean, maybe he's just doing it so he keeps keep the peace in the house. Maybe, yeah. which is the biggest farce in the world. I have to say that's a mistake if you do that. It is. It's a big mistake. Big <laughs> mistake. I know people only want to say happy wife, happy life, but that's a whole wow. different, and that's a whole different. Uh, yeah, I don't want to use that analogy. Yeah. That's, whole, that's that's a whole podcast by itself. Right, right, right. That's, <laughs> that's a whole podcast by itself to break that, to break that down. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but let's go to uh, um, Mitch and Christian. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna deal with Mitch and Kristen, and I'm, I'm gonna deal with the other couples a little bit later. Let's, let's deal with Mitch and, uh, Mitch and Kristen. Your, your thoughts, Tommy, on Mitch and Kristen, and 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 Mitch not getting none. Mitch has a problem. I wonder what he said. Right. Like, like my whole the whole time when he first was like, we cut out, we stopped having sex because I got too uh, jokey in the middle of like I'm like, what did you say? You know, like what was it that was so bad that she was like nah we we gotta stop because obviously he thought it was funny but she didn't right so um i mean my mind i'm I'm with you tommy my mind went like a million different places like what did dude do did she try to do something and and it didn't work out and he bust out laughing right right (laughs) or 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 something happened you know something that killed the whole vibe and the whole move like you know what i'm not doing that no more yeah, right. Like what happened? Um Mitch is still Mitch in this thing. Um and he's trying. You know, I do give him that. He's he is attempting um to kind of listen to her and see what she's doing. The biggest thing that stood out to me was when they were sitting down with Dr. Pia and they described I think they the question was about their superhero. Mm-hmm. Um, growing up as a child, who was a superhero as a child? And she talked about her mom, and he like interrupted. Well, not interrupted, but but like corrected her. It was like, is that who your hero was as a child? Like I was like, man, you could have just been quiet, and like kept that to yourself because it doesn't matter, you know. Like that, her answering that question does not change 
anything about their relationship. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just uh, he she could have said Charlie Brown was her hero growing up as a child. You know, that has no effect on their relationship whatsoever right now. Only thing it does is gives him an idea of who she thinks highly of. Oh, okay, it's your mom. All right, bet when your mom's birthday come around, I'm gonna make sure to get her a gift. That'll give me browning points. Mother's Day come around, make sure she gets something for Mother's Day. That'll give me some points. He didn't have to say, but is this from your childhood? And I think that's where Mitch is not seeing where he, you know, messes up, you know, because it's things that it's, it's like, it's almost like he has an uh, impulse control problems and he just can't help himself. And it's like, you just stabbing yourself in the foot because that was unnecessary completely. Um, I think a funny part was when they were talking about their favorite sex positions and she didn't get the, you know, why did like, why would this be your, you know, the best position and stuff like that? Um, I don't know, man, that, that couple there is like, she's going to say yes to him because of the idea of marriage. Mm -hmm. And he's going to say, I don't know what he's going to say, man. He's a, he's a, you know, he's a toss up from week to week, man. He is, man. I thought that part was funny, too, because I thought Mitch was like a uh, high school kid, right? Because every time they talked about sex, he was laughing and giggling, right? He? He like, he you're, the oldest one, you're the oldest one on the show. You're 41 years old, right? Yeah. And you're laughing and giggling about doggy style, right? You're laughing and giggling about cuddling, or you're laughing and giggling about all these other things. Like, at what point do you, as, as Mitch, what point do you grow up, right? At mm. what point you say, you know what, my wife doesn't like laughing and giggling. I'm going to keep that crap. I'm going to keep that to myself. Right, I, uh, well, I think it's fun. What he said, uh, all the all the sounds and stuff that goes on. And... Oh yeah, he he was like, it's the weird sounds, it's the human fluids. I was like, oh my god, really? <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I understand laughing, I understand, but like, like I said, Tommy, I'm like you. You know, I go back to what I said. I wanted to know what he said. I wanted mm -hmm. Mr. To... What did he say? What did he do? And we already know Kristen was like, it ain't lasting long anyway. So what did he do in those time spans? to make her really say, you know what? I ain't giving this dude no more sex. Because remember, if you think about it, go back to the previous episodes, that's what she wanted to do. She was ready, she was she was quick and she was ready to like, yo, I wanna get in the sheets with my husband. I wanna, I wanna have sex with my husband, I wanna have sex with my husband. And now she has sex with him and that junk cooled off. And Mitch is like, hold up, what's going on? Yeah. Is it laughing? Is it my, you know, what? What? what is it? What's causing this to the, the stop? Even when she said her favorite position, he was like, he came selfish. Oh, yeah, that's how that's the way I finish. Or something like he said. Something right, smart. right. Yeah, something smart. I'm like, yo, dog, shut up. Keep it. Keep it, man. It's it's yeah. so you don't have to say everything that comes up, man. Keep it tight to the best. I, I like that she said, now come on, you know, you've been married for a while like us, you know, not for a while, not the same time span, but you know, yeah, for yeah, a while. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So once you done got it. You know, you can make you can be like, oh, you made this stupid face. Yeah, right. Right. Not to say that at the beginning. No, no. <laughs> you not. You know, uh, you not. Cause she'll be like, "What? I'll make my stupid face at home. Then don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry about it." So I think he probably was like, "Oh, you sound. You know, you sound stupid. Or why you look like that? Why you move?" And she was like, "Wait, what? Why you make those sounds? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> why?" You why you sound like that? <laughs> you know, like, mm -mm. so yeah, it, like she said, it's probably some stuff that later on, after you've been with somebody for a while, it'd be fine to say because you're comfortable with each other. But in the beginning, you're self-conscious. So you can't be like, oh, you got a dimple right there. Oh, look at that. Look, so but you <laughs> look, just move like that. Oh my gosh. Turn the lights back on or turn them off. <laughs> you know, but um, I was just like, Cause he, t I mean, he's not lying. It is some funny things that can happen, but it, again, not right now, sir. Wait till later. Don't embarrass her. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she has to be comfortable with that, though. That's yeah. crazy because in the middle, you can't do it in the middle of it. It's no. okay, like, y'all finish and you know you're laying you laying in bed and talking to each other. Yeah, Thank being you. kind of joking and playing stuff like that, Thank but. You. In the middle of it, you and you and uh you you working. <laughs> <laughs> you, Tommy, 
I said the same thing. I said now after the fact, you know, you can reflect back and be like, bro, you made this really silly face. Right. Was, you know, you I was like, wow, okay, uh, what are you looking at? But after right, you gonna ruin the mood, I'm telling you. Things gonna start shutting down. Yeah, like it's, never. it's already shut down for me. I mean, shut down enough to hear to bring it up because Mitch wants it. No, she... no, no. I'm talking about like Tommy oh. said. If you say this in the middle of the act, oh, yeah. it's going to shut down. It's like I, ain't, I don't even want. I don't want to do it no more. That's yeah. okay. Yeah, it, it's... you know, it had to be something she was self conscious about for uh, yes. her to just completely yes. be like, no, we're not gonna do it, and and like not not in a like we'll get over this type of deal but it was like a kind of like you have to build that back up again uh, you know type of deal it's <laughs> ain't like you're being punished for like a week but it's it's like this is indefinite until <laughs> right. but like you guys said you got to know your spouse though man you got to be able to know your spouse know what they're self-conscious about what they like what you can't mm -hmm. what they don't like how to do this how to do that and at this point in their marriage five weeks you he should still be asking questions mm -hmm. right yeah. Right, they should still be exploring themselves sexually. All right, what do you like? You like this? Do you like that? How do you? I mean, they, they finally asked a question. She like, you didn't know she liked doggy style after five weeks. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, y'all should have had that conversation on the honeymoon, or should have yeah. matter of fact, you had that conversation the first time you had sex. Like, what do you like? Right. Right. <laughs> so, but, they, but a lot of people don't though. Let's not just put it on there. A lot of people don't even have that conversation. Just. Go wow. on and, and figure it out as you go along. But you know what? That's a problem though, because guess what? Uh, and I'm, I'm saying that we all grown on this spot on this spot. It's a problem because you can't treat your your current mate like your old mate because right. they they don't like may not like the same thing, right? Right? Because she did she odd and ood here or he odd and hood it ha odd and hood there, right? Uh, it doesn't mean that person is gonna like that. They may not like that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you have to have those conversations. And you should have those conversations. That's what I'm saying. I, I agree you should, but it don't always happen. It doesn't always happen, but you should. Because what happened is you coming in there, because your heart can get broken as a dude, because you know the last chick you were with, you did this, this, and this, and it was like, yo, smack you smack it, rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it down, and, and like it was the world. Oh, no. <laughs> so, and, right? And, and everything was great. And you go to this new girl or this new person. Why and, are you so rough? And you putting on your you putting the, you putting your best moves in, and she like. I ain't do nothing for me. <laughs> he put your back into it. <laughs> no, I think I think Miguel came into the not Miguel, but uh, who we talk about? Mitch. I think Mitch came into the situation as a, with a unique position because he hadn't gotten in it in a in a long time. Right. So there's there's the opportunity to have the conversation when we do lay down to have sex. Be like, yo, I haven't had sex in a while guide me through this thing so i can please you you know right. it's a simple conversation and then that allows her to tell him and show him what she likes because for men like it doesn't take much <laughs> you know what i'm saying like we pretty much end that thing you know <laughs> so it's it's like what do you like what do you want me to do and that's what i'm going to do because i haven't i don't have the experience to like we're going into this thing brand new and i don't have the experience behind me as as sex being a regular thing in my everyday life you know and then you're new so this is the opportunity for you to teach me how to please you having that conversation in the beginning does not put him in a position where he at now five mm -hmm. weeks in and she's like no you know mm -hmm. Because it's uh, what do what was Janet Jackson's song? It's the pleasure principle, right? You know, I want that pleasure. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. That's a whole different topic. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole different podcast. The, the only but other we're, gonna, thing we're gonna do that together. August Love Story, yeah. Jackie Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> hey, set it up, man. Set it up. Nah. <laughs> um, the only other thing, uh, I want to go back a little bit. The conversation where um they were talking about. Your your hero, your childhood hero, and as uh Mitch said, your heroine. <laughs> he said heroine. Oh, right. heroine. <laughs> I was like, sir, not, what? Anyway, um, was it just me or did this the first time we heard Kristen say her mother was cute of Cuban descent? Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I was like, why has she not said this before? And it's not like she hasn't talked about her mom. I was like, okay, so that gives us a better perspective when it comes to um, 
Kristen too. And yeah, I was like you, Tommy. I was like, to me, I felt like uh, Kristen went more with my family's a sensitive topic. I would have been like, how you going to tell me who my hero was? That's what yeah. I got. That's what I felt like he was saying. But she went to, oh, leave me alone about my family. And I was like, nah, my thing is, don't tell me what I'm trying to say. I know the question. I'm answering right. the question like I want to answer the question. But she didn't do that. Maybe because she's not me and I'm not her. <laughs> if you get my drift. Because right. <laughs> as a sister, I'd have been like, you can't tell me what to say. <laughs> but that's just I mean, me. her hero could be her mom. Mitch didn't have those. Things. You know what I'm saying? His hero was some action star, whoever it was. Well, he didn't ever say, he never said the action star. Oh, yeah, that too. He could have been Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, remember his. He, 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 he said, never even gave anybody. He just like the action hero. Action heroes off of TV, right? You, so that's oh. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Dolph Lunger, maybe Sylvester Stallone, those guys that he saw on TV. There was nobody there. So maybe it was X, Wolverine from X-Men. I don't know. Iron Man. And the, the sad part about my answer to that question would be Bill Cosby. I know. Right. And this it like that hurt me so bad when uh I found out about it. And so it's not Bill Cosby, it's Heathcliff. Right. Right. Who is actually, you know, the person I used to like really look up to and stuff like that. So I just threw that in there because I was thinking about it just I now. know that does suck. Yeah, that- it does. It does. it sucks because it's Bill Cosby uh-huh. and then R. Kelly, you know. I like R. Kelly, one of the greatest songwriters of hit, period, and can't even listen to his music. I know, right? Unless you're in the privacy of your own home, don't tell nobody, right? <laughs> man, it's, it's like, look, I can't even do it then, man. I'd be like, dog, I really like this song. Let me skip it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Mona, you right? You know what? <laughs> Captain Planet. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Yo, I like I like that one. I was, that's that's a good one. But Mitch and Kristen, I mean, to them, they was they're kind of low key. I did laugh at Mitch when he was laying on the beach because he always cut up in the fetal position, like the little baby. And and I think he said something smart, like you know, oh, she said something smart, like you can be sucking on nipples or something like that. It was just the, the way he said he laughed and giggled again. <laughs> high school kid, I expect that from my sixteen year old yeah, high schooler, not right. not a forty one year old man who's been married for five weeks but it goes back to what you said tommy he hadn't had none in a while which again this probably explains why mitch hadn't had none in a while and i think somebody said in the comment none and relationship, none in relationship. Mean, relationship yeah. and sex he had relationship in and sex but it's probably why this is like i think Artika said it or talisa said it on a past show and somebody else in the chat said it mitch just wanted to be married and so he's happy because he's married and he can get whatever he wants sex and marriage so it's a bucket list thing for him mm-hmm. the bucket list and he wouldn't i think he said it i wouldn't have been married any other way i don't think if it wasn't for the show i don't see yeah. myself being married mm-hmm. yeah. so, so we, uh let's let's go to uh man let's miss let's go uh stasha and nate yes i want to uh hit on stasha and nate right there for a minute mr mr sexual himself right <laughs> You know, from one extreme to the other. Look, look Stasha Man. and Nate, tell me your thoughts on Stasha and Nate. <laughs> Man, I told our ticket, I was like, I want to get one of them swing joints. <laughs> like, them things look like they're a little fun. But uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, when uh, Nate was talking, like, the trust thing is going to be big for them. I don't know what it's going to take for her to get over the trusting and trusting him. Um, they're probably gonna have to go through something where she solely has to lean on him, um, for her to fully grasp the idea that he's here for her. Um, taking losing the control, like I think uh, Artika brought it up in our uh, review of it, the control and trust, like tying control and trust together, like she don't trust. Like the what she say the outside is blue unless she can see it and stuff like that. So it's it's like her giving control to him going into that dungeon, um, and everything like that. It, it was a step in the right direction, but I think they look at it for or from the sexual part because I guess both of them are, are so sexual, you know, um, and open with their sexuality uh, with each other. I think that's healthy for their marriage, you know, to be able to like think past the giggles, 
You know what I'm saying? Think past the things that you're going to be like, you're going to laugh about when you hear. And uh, no, I, I think they're doing great. I think that was a great exercise for them. I just hate that they, they're they like the softcore porn couple. <laughs> like this like the second or third time. We we be like, all right, so what are we doing here? You know? <laughs> Yo. <Sorry. laughs> I, I think I'm, I'm with you, Tommy. I feel like they really didn't need that exercise. <laughs> they didn't no. need, like, they needed to exhibit relinquishing control in another way. I, I really don't think they had that problem. Now that we know they've consummated, we know they've yeah. consummated. I just, I feel like they're the freaky deaky couple anyway. Right. But so, it, 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 I never thought they didn't consummate. Like when he said he went down on it, I was like, "Yeah, he smashed. Yeah, there ain't no right. way he didn't smash." <laughs> that, that's what I thought too. Like, yo, he he just did, and you know, people saying, "Oh, he just did it because he's a giver." Nah, nah. He got, he, like I said, he got something. You know, but, but what she said too on after party, she was like, "Yo, that was just PG because he licked my toes and he put chocolate syrup on my toes, and they showed the footage, and then then then, then um." Keisha asked her, you like, did y'all get nervous with the cameraman in there? The cameraman kept asking us, do you want to leave? We were like, we was cool. But like, we was cool. Oh, man. <laughs> we were like, good with the cameraman, you know, to the point where the cameraman eventually left. Whatever I hope so. Case, whatever the case may be. <laughs> but I mean, Stasha was like, yo, she's a little freakier than him. You know, she just, she, you know, she just tried to keep it well together. Yeah. You know, but again, like, relinquishing control in that area for her wasn't an issue. It's other areas, like when it comes to decision making in the home or things that he wants to do or needs to do that she needs to trust him to do. And it wasn't a sexual thing. Mm-hmm. I but I don't even think it's that. It's, to, from what I see, it's a trust in, um, because I think he'll be, I think she trusts that he'll be a good provider and take care of home. Her, her problem is, do you really want me? I have yeah. to trust that, you know, so I don't even, how do you even venture you to relinquish control there? That's what I'm saying. You That's can. what I'm saying. All of her thing is, you know, do you really like me? Do you really love me? Are you going to be for me, be with me, um, be there for me in that aspect? That's where she needs to relinquish control. And it's, you just got to do that. I mean, God knows we've probably all had our heart broken and you go into the next thing like, mm, the, mm, but it's it's a chance you take. It's a chance you take when you get in a relationship. That's a lot of questions that make this work. You know, uh-huh. this whole thing works if if you're able to relinquish that. I don't trust this. If you're able to relinquish the this is a stranger mm-hmm. and what he says, what he's doing is what I need to trust. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're able to relinquish that, I think it works. You know, right. but if you're not, if you're holding on to whatever it is that you're holding on to, it's not going to work. Sexuality is a it's a whole different thing. Sex is a whole different thing. But when it comes to you as the person. Like, what can you you know, what I'm saying you have to relinquish that control, you have to relinquish that idea that this person may not be saying may not mean what he's saying or mm-hmm. may not mean what she's saying. You know, you have to just be like, I'm going to trust whatever this person says until this person gives me a reason not to trust them. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Nate has given her a reason not to um, trust him and, and his word as of yet. Like he, you know, at the beginning, we always like, I don't know about this dude. But then now it's, you know, he he's pretty much came through with everything he said he was yeah. going to do so. Yeah, I mean, what else does he have to do, right? To, in order for her to trust him, he's done everything pre nup, I mean, post nup to the tattoo to yeah. all of this. And I think she's been hurt by men so much in her life yeah. that she needs to have these parameters and things put in place. So if she does get hurt, oh, I told you so. So she, I think she's kind of setting him up a little bit to see what he would feel on. You know what I'm saying? Um, but he hasn't done anything yet. He just needs to know. And, and she's to the point where she could push him away. If she does not trust him, you know, if she does not understand that he's going to be a provider. Right. Men just want to be trusted. I, I don't need you to tell me 15, 20 times to, that you're, you got a, a low. um you, got, you have no gas in your car. Trust that I'm going to fill it up. Right. Trust right. that I'm going to take care of situations and things in the house is broken. I'm, I'm going to take care. Of it. I'm going to fix it. You know, things of that those need to just understand. And he needs that type of trust and confidence. 
And from her, he need to get that from her. Not in the bedroom, but in just the simple things in life. If I mm-hmm. say I'm going to be home at 6.30, guess what? I'm going to be home at 6.30. Trust that I'll be there. If I come in 6.35, don't trip. It's five minutes. Might have been traffic, something of the nature. You know, so he's just those type of things, she needs to build a trust up in. Or give him little assignments. To, you know, hey, Nate, can you do this? Right? Now, can you stop by here? Can you do that? Can you do this? A honey do this, whatever. Can you get this done? Can you get this done? That done. And when he does it, you know what? I appreciate you. Thanks. That type of things to build a trust up in Nate. And the the so, real the real thing that I like as you was talking, the thing that I was thinking about was what happens when he fails at something. Mm-hmm. Because we're not perfect. Right. We we like we have our word, but we always something may happen and we can't stand by what you know what we say we was gonna do and stuff like that. How do you bounce back from that? Because you can't just be like, Oh, he didn't do this and just throw him out the window. Right. Because you have to have that grace mm-hmm. because you understand nobody's perfect because you understand this process and marriage is a, uh, is a, is a ever going everlasting thing. It's always evolving. It's always correcting and incorrecting itself. So knowing that, knowing that you got to build this trust somehow, knowing that you have to relinquish some type mm-hmm. of control because it's a control f- uh, factor as well for her too. You have to relinquish control because now you got you got these two ships and you're trying to point them in one direction with one captain, with mm-hmm. two minds, one captain, you know, trying to go in one direction. It's hard. So on some things, you got to have to say, well, you you take the wheel. But then sometimes you can say, I, he trusts me enough to take the wheel. And you have to do that. So um, I wonder what happens or how she reacts to him when things don't go how they planned it to go. Right. Yeah, it's, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see, you know, if she can if she can navigate a fall by Nate. Yeah. But what happens when she when Nate can't trust her though? And see, that's the thing we don't think about a lot. We don't think about well, me personally, I don't I don't want to say everybody. Me personally, I don't think about what Nate wants and needs are mm-hmm. a lot because Stasha's wants and needs are so demanding. Yeah. She has given the biggest demands out of this relationship. So that's what I'm looking at. It's like, it's, it's, you know, his has been so I'm going with the flow. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Um, and most of the time me and are like, man, you just need to come home. You know, you just need to do this or, you know, we're happy with the simple things a lot of times, but then, then like no shade to women or anything like that. But it's, it's like, it's more required. Because you guys are more of more like I look at it like this. Women are some of the most beautiful creatures on the earth, you know, because you guys have the best gift of, of, of like bringing life into the world. I think that's the most that's the most amazing thing. Right. So the requirements for a woman, I think, are more because of one. of That's like that's one of those reasons why, you know, so it, it's I don't think about Nate's parts uh, or ideals or wants and needs just because of that simple like women are needed to be catered to a little bit more than men are but i mean i think i know women want to be catered to but at some point in time you, you men want to be catered to they may not express it or say it but men want to be catered to as well because they talked yeah. about like justin when they want to be <laughs> be catered to you know well, well, I think, it's all um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think um because I'm I'm a woman, I could say, you know, I think we are we are probably more complex than men, but the difference is is because we're more emotional. It's just like the book we are reading. Yeah, is so um women receive love differently, like men for them respect is love. Mm-hmm. And for women, I don't want to say love is love, but you know. Mm-hmm emotional you know that kind of yeah that's love for us knowing that we matter of fact this is a perp letting a woman know i'm wanted you find me attractive not that men don't want that but that really lets a woman know okay he loves me and so that's what stasha's looking for whereas nate is like just respect the fact that i'm gonna be there that that mm-hmm. that's what makes me feel good that's how i know you love me because if you can respect the fact that I'm going to be there, respect the fact that I'm going to be a man, you know, whatever the case may be. So, yeah, I think in that respect, 
uh, men are a whole lot simpler than women because it because the way you love a woman each each woman is going to be so different yeah. so different and i mean same thing for men but it really comes down to respect with men if you respect mm -hmm. me you know and you hold me in a high esteem and honor i take that men so, just want to be needed too yeah That's but it. we can't come we can't come out and say i just want you to need me you know right 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 it, it sounds it sounds uh misogynistic and so we don't want to be that, you know. Then it sounds right. like you 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 being emotional. We don't want to be that, you know. We're taught not to be these things, right? Like, prime example: Nate's dad was like, "No, nah, I don't want him to cry." I told him, taught him not to cry, because it's looked upon as being a negative thing for a man. But mm -hmm. crying is one of the most natural things that we do as human beings. Yeah, right. The way to get out of the way to get out of emotions healthily, healthy. Right. Yeah. So it, it's. You know, I don't know, man. Society is something else when it comes to men and women. Oh, absolutely. It is. And the book we're talking about is, is um, what the name of the book is one is it one is for for men only, for men only. and for when women only, and it's by Shanti Feldman. Yeah. And then um, her husband Jeff Feldman. Jeff so. Feldman. Yeah, it's a good good book. I might drop the link in the chat once I find it. Uh, you guys may want to check may want to check that out. It's, it's, Definitely it's, send it to me, man. I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's good read. And, and you know, we, I reread both. I read the men. I read the women book first. Well, I read the men book first, and then I flipped over and we listened to the women's side. So get understand where your spouse is coming from and where the, your your husband is coming from, where the wife is coming from, where the husband is coming from. So it's a good read, good listen on Amazon, or whatever the case may be, or um, Audible if you like aud read audio books. But you got to check mm -hmm. those out. Um, but what Nate just thought, Nate just need to give my man Stasha, excuse me, Stasha just need to give know that Nate is there for her. Mm -hmm. He's there for her. And and just like most guys, if you don't trust us long enough, at a point in time, say, you know what, you don't trust me, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, what else do I have to do to what else do I have to, have to prove my love to you, right? Prove I gotta prove my love every night. I gotta fight every night to prove my love. <laughs> Five heartbeats, y'all. Just anybody who's out there, right? I gotta prove, I gotta prove my love here. And that's why Nate, I think that's how Nate is feeling though. Like, yeah. what else do I have to do to prove my love to you? I've done everything. Everything you asked me to do, everything that you wanted me to do, everything that you needed me to do, I've done that, and you still don't trust me. Like, I'm not even putting my money with yours. I'm keeping my own bank account. I forgot about that when we were talking about things you've done. All right, yeah. we're going to have to put our money together. And when we do put money together, we, I even agree to whatever I put in, I take out. Whatever you put in, you take out. So what else is what else do my brother? What else do he have to do? Y'all let us know the chat. Tell me so. What else do Nate have to do? But again, what demands have state Nate have given Stasha? We haven't heard state Nate giving Stasha any demands, right? <laughs> to cut out whatever she I quit asking him to love him. Right. <laughs> That's it. Stop asking him. <laughs> Man, it's, it's, the crazy part about it is she wants kids in a year or a child in a year. That even complicates things more. Mm -hmm. Yo. You know, so it's like right. Nate, Nate's only demand is let me love you, let yeah. me show you, just let me show you. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, but it's only been five weeks too, though. So you want all this in five weeks? Yeah, that's the crazy part, though. I think that's what people like. For me, I feel like when the the couples are so fast to say I love you, so fast to be. Like, oh, I want you to be head over heels for me. You're still in that honeymoon stage. Mm -hmm. You know, you're still in the everything is cute. and it, Like, enjoy that stage because the first argument you have, you have to have enough enjoyment behind you to want to stay because that first argument is going to be hell, you know, yeah. um, and it's going to come out of nowhere. Like what they're arguing about, like, I don't count that. You know, I'm talking about the real, like, some stuff you got to sit down and think about type of argument mm -hmm. that they got to have. But it, it's, I think they get too caught up on, I got eight weeks to make a decision. You got to love me within these eight weeks. When in reality, most of the time, nobody's saying they love you in, in within eight weeks. Nope. They might have a really strong, they might know that they love you and know that this is it for me. But nobody's really saying that in the first eight weeks of meeting somebody. Right. You know? So I don't know. I hope they'll get there. I think I think they'll be all right though. I hope so. I, I think they'll be all right. 
Um, she said she might. She she heard that she's already pregnant. I just read that. I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> I hope not. Man, y'all know. Look, if he's making toes and doing all this other stuff, she probably is already pregnant. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Which is a side <laughs> note. That's another thing. You y'all talking about? I, and I'm, I'm digressing. I'm going back to Mitch and Kristen. You talking about people talking about their sexual needs and desires? That's something people need to be talking about too. Dag nabbit. <laughs> What kind of protection do you, what kind of uh, uh, contraceptive do you use? Y'all not having them conversations. Some of y'all ain't having them um, uh, STI conversations neither. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's something that they used to do on this show, right? Like uh, Pastor Kyle was asking, I think he asked Chris and Paige if, yeah, that's who it was. Yeah. He was like, y'all use protection and they wasn't. Right. Um, right. I but, think you know. people need to, you know, realize, hey, you did, like, you did just meet this person, even though he's like he and she are, are y'all are married. You did just meet this person, now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, boy. It's, it's quick, but yeah, they need to learn how to trust each other, and I think that's the key with Stasha and Nate. Yeah, boy. Oh, let's, <laughs> let's 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 move on to hear this train wreck. We might stay there for a minute. Which, which train wreck? The, the, the uh, one train, the lesser train wreck. I was surprised. There was the lesser train wreck. I'm going to Ben and Morgan right now because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm saving Alexis and Justin for last because that's, that's going to be there for a minute. Those two right there are an issue, right? Uh, those two are big issues. Um, so let's get there to um, Tommy, your thoughts on Ben and Morgan and how Morgan's just be stonewalling, dude. Oh, my God. I was like, why is she here? That's the first note I wrote. Why is she here? You know, um, I was kind of. Like it kind of hit me a little hard when uh Dr. Pia called Ben vindictive and then to realize that Ben didn't know what vindictive what she meant by it. Like, what do you mean vindictive? You know? And I slowly, like from like the last three weeks, I've started to realize Ben doesn't understand a lot of the things that people are like he's saying. But like I when I see Ben sit down and talk with Morgan. I see the Mike Tyson and Robin Givens uh, interview and how, like, of course, Mike Tyson was drugged out of his mind, you know, but he just sat there and she basically called him an animal, basically a beast. And so Morgan is sitting here dogging him and he just has to sit there and not understand what's being said. And then he's just agreeing with the things that, that she's saying about him. and. It's sad. It's sad to see. It's sad to hear. I think Ben wanted the explanation of how. He- oh, okay. Artika is, uh, you know, commenting and everything. Hey, Artika. Um, but yeah. So it, it it was like it was interesting to see him just sit there, and I hated that he's like, yeah, I can agree with that, and you know, he's always agreeing with what Morgan says, but that's not that's not it, you know. Morgan has has basically from the jump has cut him off. She didn't give him a fair fight. <laughs> she didn't give him a fair fight in this whole married at first sight experience. And so him being such a novice at relationships and how they go, you know, he's just kind of going with what she's what she's given. Um, when he brought up the, the fact that Morgan reminds him of his dad and how cold his dad was and cut off his dad was and you know his responses to everything and i was like ah that makes sense why isn't that a fair thing for um for ben to request of her to know how to um talk to him better like hey we're we're starting this thing off wrong because you not talk to me the way i want you to talk to me you know what like it's it's just one side and i hated that morgan is just so cold to this dude like it bothers me to my core and then dr pia didn't make it better because she was like i felt like she was in agreement with him and i'm like no don't be in agreement with her she's the enemy she's the bad guy yeah i think it's not working because of her but it made me think what what else did he lie about that was the first thing i'm kept coming to my mind right and I think I said it on our review. This can't just be over this degree in the situation, right? It has to be much. It, it has to be much more than that. It's like with the Mitch situation. No one's ever. No one's saying 
Uh, you know, Mitch didn't say what the sexual thing was he laughed at, but no one is actually saying what did Ben actually say? Right. Right. right? What did he Nobody say? He says, no, she's so I don't feel trusted. I don't feel you feel awful. What? What did he say that this dude has to take him for? He's like, yeah, I did say this. I do apologize. But Dr. Pia called him vindictive and all that. She know what he says. But we as the viewer don't know what he said or what he did to make her feel so disgusted. What is it? <laughs> I, the, and she and she won't let him talk to get it out. You know what I mean? Uh, once again, it's accusing him of not having her back. But not saying, like you said, what did you? Okay, this is what Alexis told me you said. What did you say? Mm -hmm. And it's like off the rip, you believe in her over him. And he really didn't give you a reason not to believe him. He's, he does. What, what makes you just, you really just met both of them. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know her. I don't know her. Yeah. You know what I mean? She ain't got no recordings. I don't know. But all I know, she could be lying. She might have heard it wrong or whatever. I go back to what she said when the whole BSN thing came out. She keeps saying he should have had my back. I, I don't know you, man. I don't know you. What do you mean? Maybe I'm not the have a back, have your back type of person. Have Maybe. your back how is the question. That's what I'm saying. But how i'm yeah. maybe i'm not you don't know me well enough to know if i'm gonna have your back or not no she yeah. triggers that dude he said it she triggers me like my dad triggers me what? which means she be screaming on bro and then oh, bro, yeah. and she holding bro to the standard that he can't live up to like everything he remember he said i will buy her favorite food or i would take her out i would do all these things for her and I, I, well, that I, was I, when he was trying to kiss up no, after the fact. i got a point here i think when he even though when he did all those things she still was like kiss my butt and yeah. he was like, what else do I have to do to please you, mm -hmm. right? So what mm -hmm. I'm saying, he's triggered by these things. Like, he might have tried to do all the nice things for dad, take out the trash early in, and make sure the house was cleaned up, and dad was still on him. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when he said, I'm triggered by her, it's like, what else? I'm triggered because I'm trying to please you, and you're not giving me any love back. Mm -hmm. Right. It's. And I wanted to say, uh, with the apology thing, I think the apology thing was this week too, right? Mm -hmm. She She wants him to give an apology that feels real or something she said like that yeah, like, that's not problem. his problem that's a her problem right. right that's a that's a that's a on her problem because um Artica, <laughs> uh that's a you know like if i say i'm sorry and i'm and i'm sorry for x y and z and i've made changes to say i'm sorry for x y and z and you're like well that's not good enough well that's all i'm gonna give you that's it. That's all I got. You know, I'm going I'm to change the behavior, but I'm also like it's Ben's issue or the only issue I have with Ben is that he did not speak up and, mm -hmm. and stand up for himself when it came to her asking him to do impossible tasks as to not talk to the other couples about us because I don't want them to look at me any different. Or stop doing stupid stuff, and they won't look at you any different. Right. I have an issue, and I feel like I can't talk to you about it. So I'm gonna go to the next person that I know that I'm comfortable with that I can talk to about it. Which it was Justin, and I feel I got an issue with Justin too for not checking his wife. Mm -hmm. Right? Hey, they ain't supposed to stay between me and you if me and you talk about it. Now, I'm gonna tell you, but you know that's between me and you. You know. Well, um, look, look who you said though. Justin can't check his wife because she just as she just as manly as he is. And I'm gonna go. Their roles are different when we get to Justin and Alexis. But but <laughs> look at look at both of their wives, right? Both of their wives are um, dominant figures, yeah. and these guys can't get a word in edgewise, you know, or try, really can't with their wives. And so they got to run together, and that's what Ben figured we had in common. Yeah. And, and and I get it, you know, I, I get it. Hey, you find your friend and you talk to your friend about the things that you feel like you can't talk to your spouse about or trying to figure out how do I talk to my spouse about, you know, hey, my wife can't cook. What do you do or how would you approach the situation? Just getting an idea from somebody else trying to figure out how can I get my teach my wife how to cook, you know, 
because she spends all this money going out to eat and we can't, you know, that's just not physic uh financially smart. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's like she gave him an impossible task to do and he did his best with it. I hate it that he didn't speak up about that, you know, because now we're in a situation where we in where it's looking like he's the the villain and and Morgan is sitting up here telling everybody, "Oh, he did this, oh, he did that." And the only thing he can do is agree with what she say. Mm-hmm. makes sense to me at all yeah and um that's what i was going to say too it's just like um this with dr pia and dr pepper somebody said in the comments too like i was so irritated that they put the focus on ben oh like but that irritated the mess out of me i'm like so we just not going to address her mean girl attitude like we're not going to say nothing about that at all. You're going to call him you off the rip because because Morgan told Dr. Pia he attacked my character behind my back. He said this, Dr. P. Oh, he told half truths. Then Dr. P is like, oh, you are being vindictive. But OK. Ask him, what did he say? Don't just say you are being vindictive. Give him a chance to say they jumping on her side instead of saying, but okay, I understand he might not have done something right, but why are you so freaking mean? <laughs> why are you treating him so bad? I want an emotional apology. Okay, explain to me what you mean by emotional apology. Because he said, I'm sorry. He bought you the chicken sausage. He did this. He did that. He apologized <clears throat> to your family. He apologized. What do you want? My he, husband said. He apologized he, to the cameraman. Right. My husband said she wants him to grovel at her feet and cry. He's not going to cry. No, I mean, and he. It, that's the. That's the other part. He is crying. He's emotional about it. What? What else do you want this man to do? I want an emotional apology. And I mean, he's. I don't expect no man to be like <laughs> Morgan. I'm so. You know. I don't expect that. The man lost seven pounds and he went to therapy, right? You know what I'm saying? He lost seven pounds to go to therapy. He's stressed. If he can pull his hair out, he'll pull his hair out. What else do you want? Stasha said, even if he does give you an apology, you're not going to like it anyway. You're not going to accept it. You're not going to accept it. You're not going to accept it. If he does give you an apology. If he does everything he actually asked him to do, he will still be beating him up for the next six or seven years behind this. Right. Right. And he and he's just going to sit there and take it because that's his. that's how he's – been able to if, if it's anything like his dad that's the way he treated his dad he just sits there and take it that's probably mm-hmm. how his dad treats his mom too and his mom just kind of it's like this is just what it is yeah mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. we haven't even thought about that part right it's like how does this translate to his mom because you know his mom has some type of control over like his life they trauma mm-hmm. it over his daddy <laughs> So it's like once he talks to his mom about this situation, what she's going to say and how is that going to affect his response to her? Mm -hmm. I I, I like, I agree. Yeah, the best apology is change behavior. I agree, but she not even giving him an opportunity to change the behavior because Dr. Pia said it. I'm sitting here watching and we saw it too. You see how her demeanor changed? She wasn't all rah-rah in there with Dr. Pia and Dr. Pia said, I, you having a calm conversation. You opened up some more. So Ben can show her some action. If she could calm the heck down. He did. Bro, I got up and gave her the tissue and she looked like she didn't want the tissue. She didn't That's want to take the saying. tissue she from just her. To calm down. But I totally agree with you. I mean, Ben, Ben lies to her, right? Um, and he, and he does have to change behavior. I'm not negating to anybody who listening. I'm not, in favor of Ben lying to Morgan, right? No. Not in favor of Ben lying to Morgan, not in favor of Ben um, uh, not being trustworthy with what Morgan asked him to do, being faithful to his spouse. But I do have a problem. There's a point in time in marriage and there's a point in time in a relationship, you have to forgive the other person, mm-hmm. right? You have to forgive the other person and you have to move on. Can you imagine if Ben, um, you know, this is just for him telling somebody a situation or a story, right? Can you imagine if Ben lost a job and couldn't provide? Could you imagine if, if Morgan lost her job and she had to really depend on Ben to take care of things in their marriage? Could she do it? Because she already don't trust him, right? You know, 
people they, they'll go out together or go out to eat and be in a couple setting and somebody said hey morgan how was work today or hey ben you know how you feel about morgan working at the hospital and he was like oh she ain't got no job you know what I'm saying? or she ain't, or she ain't work or she ain't working right now you know what i'm saying because just be happen things happen in marriages where in conversations you have a relationship that of people that you deal with and you may say something in your relationship to somebody else and you don't mean no harm by it. It's just conversation. We trust you. You trust us. We talk, right? You know, mm-hmm. and, that, and you don't expect him to broadcast it, but he feels she wants everything tight lipped because what I think is Morgan's living a lifestyle that she don't want. She has a perfect lifestyle. And she want don't want she don't want anybody to know that she makes mistakes. Mm-hmm. That she and doesn't. That's, and that's the thing that uh, it's the real issue is that. Morgan is trying to put on this and on this front that everything's everything's a okay, and everybody makes mistakes, right? Literally, <laughs> right? Like yeah. it, it's it's like when you get married or when you talk to married folks, right? They always say we don't have it all together. Mm-hmm. No, you know we don't like everything is not perfect. We try to like. We could argue right before we get on here and we'd be like the best teammates in the world. And then we get back to arguing after we do what we need to do. But mm-hmm. That's just us doing a job, mm-hmm. doing something that's going to benefit somebody else, you know, and doing that to our best abilities. But it's like you're in this TV show. and I know you've seen the TV show. Be your authentic self. Right. 100% be yourself throughout this whole thing and don't try to put on a a, a front for people that's in it with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because those are the people that you lean on. That's why you do so much stuff together. Mm -hmm. You're leaning on these folks to help you make it through these eight weeks. Giving you lifetime friendships and couple coupleships to make it through things that you're going to go through. You know, so... I hate it that they picked on being like that, man. I know. Look, I, and I was just about to say that too. Yeah, it's it's two things. Um, we we do we make mistakes in relationships. It, it is what it is, and you just stop trying to make it look like everything is all hunky dory. But at the same time, I ain't gonna be out there exposing. You know what I'm saying? Like you said. Um, but I think that's what it is for Morgan. Like she's trying to maintain the in- image. They don't know. These are new people. I get to be the person I want to be in front of them. So you're ruining this facade I've, I've built up because she's, she's really a mean girl. <laughs> she's, oh, she is. Mean I think girl. Wolf said, uh, you know, Queen Asia said she wants to control the narrative. That's what I'm saying. So and that she, does not work on reality TV. Like you no, can't, you can't all. control the narrative. You just, you can't. Like Tommy said, just be your authentic self. And if you mean as a snake, you just mean as a snake. Right. <laughs> and and, and Tommy don't marry the first sight to gain fans. No. Nah. She came, she came on again. Yeah. <laughs> right. The experts. And she feel like the experts didn't do or do justice because they gave her somebody who, who couldn't keep her business. But again, it goes back to what I said. That first night, if this is just me. If I'm on married at first sight, that first night that we meet up, I ain't trying to have sex with nobody on the first night. We're running, we're gonna run through a whole bunch of questions in our marriage. We're gonna talk, stay up and talk. Think about the couples who stay up and talk all night long, and, and some of the couples who have a great relationship because they, they cover things like this is how we want to handle the marriage. We want to keep our business. I, I go with Ryan and Claire, right? You may not have like it, and you may have thought they fooled everybody, but they had a con- they had a conversation. So you know what? We're not going to talk about our sex life on TV, and we're going to keep it quiet. And and you know what? Claire stood by that, even lying to the girls. <laughs> you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? She again, you make that deal. Morgan and Ben never made a deal about what they can and cannot share uh, in their relationship. And if they did make a deal, he agreed to it. He broke it. She hot, and she mad, and she can't get over it. Like I said, if she can't forgive her dad, she can't forgive, she won't forgive Ben. But this is my yeah. thing. This is my thing. I would say it again. I don't know you well enough to know if you can keep a secret. I don't know. I'm not putting that kind of faith in you. I don't know. Let me ask your friends, are you a secret keeper? Let me ask your friends, do you keep the pre- the pinky promise? 
I don't know you. <laughs> same time, man. Same time. I don't know you. Yeah. I'm not putting that much. That's why, and this is a, you know, this is my thing. This is a sidebar. Uh, like when even when it comes to cheaters, like I'll I and look, look, you put too much faith in this joke, and that they not gonna say nothing. I no, no, I believe you're gonna tell. <laughs> I'm a, I mean, I'm gonna carry it like and that. We ain't learned nothing else this week. That's the Boston Celtics. That's coach, what I'm right? saying. Mm -mm. That's Boston Celtic coach. <laughs> if if cheating, man, you know you boy was sad too. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a treat a joker. When you out, you when you doing like that, when you try to control the narrative like that, I'm a treat a joker like they gonna tell. They gonna, you know what I'm saying? When it come to criminals, I'ma be prepared. Don't just be prepared not to get caught. I'ma just think in my mind, it's a chance I could get caught. How am I gonna cover my tracks? Don't this, mm -mm, I don't know you. <laughs> I need mm -hmm. somebody to ask Kevin Frazier, uh, 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 Keisha Knight Pulliam. I need somebody to ask, what did Ben actually say? I need Kevin to know. Kevin Frazier is going to sit up and cape for Morgan because, you know, that's what he does. Yeah. But it irritates me so if, bad. I just want somebody to dig in her. I need somebody to dig in her. I just, I need it. And I don't think we're going to get it. Artika, yeah. I don't think we're going to get it. And it we're makes not. me mad. We're not. We're not. Somebody need I need to find out because if it if it comes out all he said was a BSN stuff, I'm still you still mad about that after five weeks? Well, with what Nate said on after party, it sounds like that was pretty much it. He was like, outside of that, the only other thing that happened was being told white lies. And I'm assuming the white lies were I didn't talk to anybody about this. So because he was trying to avoid conflict. Yeah. So the um yeah, I just have to believe that that's what happened just by what Nate said because Nate don't have a dog in the fight. Mm -hmm. Right. And the only one little thing, Nate, the only other little tidbit they threw out there was that she said that <clears throat> um, according to Alexis, Ben said she's just mad because my family was perfect and hers wasn't, which I can't see Ben saying that considering what he shared about his family. I just don't. I think that was taken out of context. He might have said something about family. But it was taken out of context. Yeah, everything everything is deep because I mean I can't imagine Alexis going back and telling Morgan, "Hey, by the way, um, I don't trust her. I, I wouldn't I trust her." But I'm saying Alexis going back to Morgan said, "By the way, he's still talking about your BSN." Now, what I really think he probably told me, "Man, this chick can't. She might be a nurse, but she can't afford nothing." <laughs> he might have talked about her money, you know what I'm saying, or something. He wasn't getting no. I'm thinking about it. He wasn't getting no loving. He wasn't. He was doing all this other stuff. What else could he really talk about besides maybe her paper? I'm gonna tell you what, what else. Oh, she talking about. she smell or something like this that. What else? That's what you know. That's what else he talking about. What? She don't even take her scrubs off when she come home. <laughs> she don't, I mean, think about it, all he could really do is when somebody might say that you attack their character. So what made me think? Okay, she she dirty. She ain't, she don't take the trash out. She ain't come <laughs> clean the house up. She ain't doing none of this stuff. And he said like Justin, what do you do? If the person doesn't clean up and you do everything, remember she talked about that in the, in the previous episode. That if she come home, she just want to chill, right? Yeah. So she just want to chill and do nothing. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking like, okay, maybe he told Justin like, man, Justin, I know you at home, you do everything, but what if what if your wife don't do nothing either? And you know, uh, Morgan don't do the dishes, she don't take out the trash, she don't cook. What am I supposed to do? And she feel like he tacked her character. So maybe, maybe we'll see. See, um, so let's get to here. I don't know. Morgan, they're, they're, uh, next week, I think it's over with anyway. I think when Dr. Pepper asked her, does she want to be divorced? I think Morgan said, you know what? I want to be done with him. And that would be good for Ben because he'd be sure. looking pitiful. It'd be good for us so we ain't got to see that no more. Yeah. It'd be good for us on TV. I hope, my thing is, I hope she like Alyssa. If they divorce, they don't keep showing her on TV that they shit gone. That we no longer, no longer see Ben and um, Morgan that is down to four couples. So we'll see. Oh, I want to say this real quick. Um, so this goes sprinkles. Like when I worked in the hospital, I worked on a med surge unit and we did not have a particular color. Labor and delivery had a color, um, uh, like the surgical staff, they had a color. Um, but on the med when I worked at the hospital, um, yeah, med surge, we didn't have a particular color. I could wear whatever color scrubs I wanted to. Um, but I dropped my scrubs at the door when I came in the house. Cause I don't know what might've got on my clothes. 
you be, you know, you be up against patients. They might rub their nose on your clothes. I took my shoes and my scrubs off soon as I, soon as I hit the door. That's I so I'm, I don't, especially and yeah, this is a different time too. All kind of germs in there. I'm not doing it. Yep. Yeah. Huh. Ready? Yeah. Next couple. Hey, Tommy, just one question for you, man. Yeah. Y'all, y'all married five weeks, man. Can I take a go to the club every weekend without you? Nah. going to the club. I think my club cutoff was like 23. <laughs> right. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, that was for me. I was like, I don't understand that. Like, what is it about your friends so much? You know, what is it that you have to go to the club? Like, is she going to the club every weekend or is it that she's meeting up with her friends every weekend? And she said, I think she said she did brunch once. She did brunch once, but Justin said it's a club. Now, he said he didn't have a problem with her going out. It is just a club. Yeah, and then she also said, "Don't estimate the, don't underestimate the turn up." Because I could go out Monday through Friday. I was like, "How old are you?" Because, like, what? Yeah, like why? <laughs> why do like what? What sense? What are you proving? Because as soon as these, because I'm assuming it's the guys that she's going out with, because that's who we've her only seen are. her hang out with one girl, one female, and then it's like. You're hanging out with these guys. Let's assume that you're hanging out with these guys, right? As soon as they find a girl or, or you know, somebody to be in a relationship with, they're going to drop her. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to kick it with you like this because I want to kick it with my girl. Mm-hmm. And then here she is trying to go back to Justin. And Justin's going to be like, well, go out. Go do your thing because I'm, I've am i replaced that time. You know? So, um I don't understand the want to do that when you're in a situation outside of the fact that she doesn't like him and don't want to <laughs> be with him. But, you know, uh, that's a different story. Um, yeah, it's just like two hours at the club. Like, that don't make sense. I've spent more than two hours at brunch. Yeah. Like, you- <laughs> like if you actually are a person that goes to brunch, I don't know how San Diego is, but I know Atlanta. Going out for brunch in Atlanta, you're waiting 40 minutes for your food. Yeah. How are you only going to be out for two hours and you spent over half, well, just about half of it, waiting on your food? You did. You had to get there. You had to wait on your food. And then you had to eat it. And me and my friends going out for brunch means we need at least three rounds of mimosas. That's a... <laughs> That's so hilarious. I just don't understand where this two hours is coming from. That's a good point, Artig. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, Tommy, but it's two hours outside of travel time. No, nah, that's gotta be included. Because if you say I'm only gone for two hours, that's what I'm saying. I have to include travel time. That's what I'm saying. Ain't no way she was at no club for no freaking two hours. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Unless it's around the corner. It's no Damn way. Fair. Like she live on top of the club. That's what ain't no way. <laughs> you've been you've been out the house more than that. You might have physically been in the club for two hours, but the whole time you've been gone is more than that. Yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm responding, to Sharon. Sharon I'm, I, I like Alexis, but I ain't gonna root for my girl. I see my ways. <laughs> I saw your comment, Sharon, and I, I've changed my ways. Jackie's been in my ear. I'm let you know. I, I read. I think I commented back to you. Look, I didn't have a problem with her going out for two hours, right? I didn't have a problem with her going out for two hours every weekend. Uh, my, you know, my. I didn't even really have a problem with her going to the club. Um, but the problem was that it was the first Did you four, hear that? He on. said he didn't have no problem with her going to the club. Okay. It was the first four or five weeks, right? <laughs> I mean, look, Justin really don't have a problem with her going. Justin has a problem with her going to the club. He doesn't have a problem with her going out for two hours. No. The, and I read between I read between the club thing because I'm looking at it much more than the club. And Justin said it, Justin said it when they had when they had the conversation at the table, right? Justin feels that her going out to the club is another way that she's slapping him in the face because she's not intimate with him and that she's looking for something other than him. Mm-hmm. So it's really, not, it really, what I'm, I'm, I'm answering the question is, it's really not the club issue. It is the fact that she is not spending the time or giving him loving. If she was giving him loving and she was getting down and gritty with him, I don't think Justin would have a problem with the club. The problem is Justin's insecurities popping in. Well, you know what? She had the club for two or three hours with her guy friends. 
Well, maybe she like one of them. Maybe she getting it because she said she was a sexually active person, right? So maybe she getting it for them for two hours. She ain't giving it to me. So who's she getting it from? So that was I was saying. You, you see what I'm saying? That, that's the way I was looking at it. Now, but now, thanks to you and Sharon, right? <laughs> yeah, y'all came. Y'all came after my neck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I, now I'm looking at it. Okay, this is why Justin has an issue because it's much more than it's bigger than the club. Yeah, man, I had to tell Glenn. And I, I don't know why I had to tell him this. I was like, I think it even doesn't necessarily, maybe it, it, I'm saying it's Justin and Alexis. So it is a, a part part of her. But more than anything, we had this conversation. Like, as a married woman, why are you going to the club? Because it's a bunch of pervs at the club. It's men try to hit on you. Like, I'm not going to put myself in that predicament to be slapping nobody in the face. And they had nobody approaching me that I don't want to be bothered with. You know what I'm saying? So he, let's say he did have, they was good on that front. And I don't worry about you doing anything out the way going to the club. But I got a problem with the other people that's there. I can't control them. So I think that's what he was like. Don, why are you going to the club as a married woman? I'm not going to no club. I think I'm not uh, a club person anyway. Like Artika said, how old are we? In their 20s, right? No, she's no, they're in their 30s. They're in their 30s, okay. Yeah, like 35 year old Artika don't have time. Now, oh. I was just telling Tommy while we were muted, like the only person I know that can go to the club every weekend, my stepdad does go out a lot. However, he's also home before midnight every time he goes to the club. Like he's just a person who likes to get out and dance. Sometimes my mom goes with him. It's very unlikely that she goes with him, but sometimes she does. But I've run into my stepdad at the club. He goes to the the 25 and up club. I've been out with my cousins and run into him at the club, but he's literally, he doesn't drink. He goes to dance. And he's back at home by midnight, sometimes even before 11. And he's not leaving until 9. So it's just, it's a balance to it with him going to the club. But Alexis don't strike me as that person. I already know she's drinking when she gets to the club. So she's coming exactly. home drunk, probably talking loud and crazy. <laughs> and lying, talking about, I was only gone for two hours. And he looking at his watch like, nah, it's easily been five. And that makes sense. <laughs> but I think, oh. Uh... I think Justin just does not know how to say what he really wants to say to her. Like, I don't want you to go out because it looks this way and it makes me feel this way. Mm -hmm. But he's like trying to be cool and be like, no, nah, it's OK, but I have a, I have an issue with it, but it's OK because you do X, Y and Z, you know, but it, it's it's still how he communicates he doesn't want her to go to the club or he doesn't want her to go out like that that like it's it's like you're not communicating clearly as to what you want and she's taking it as well i'm gonna just go kick it with my people mm -hmm. i don't think she gave him the opportunity though because after dr pia came in attacked her <laughs> oh that was that, well, that was, was like well he didn't even offer a compromise i'm like but you should be offering a compromise <laughs> because if you know that he doesn't like something and he never said, I don't want you to go out. He said, I don't want you to go out every weekend. That's when you ease in your compromise. Mm -hmm. right. She was just like, you're controlling. And then, <laughs> Is that when she told him that uh, she like Dr. Pia said she she's not ready to be married to him right she and asked her what she ready to be married and she said yes and she asked her why and then she said are you ready to be married to justin and she was like i don't think so yeah like and then she was like hey, you telling people that i'm not ready to be married you, you said, said it <laughs> on national it. tv Look, she already swiped she already swiped left anyway so we know she ain't like you <laughs> right he right? just happened to be matched up with him but i think i agree with you though she he could have gave her a compromise or she could have gave him a compromise like okay how about every other weekend first and third i think we talked about that when we were talking about virginia right let's go first and third set aside but I forgot about you're going out all the time. What, what, ain't that her job? Like, if if your spouse expresses to you, "Hey, I have an issue with that," ain't it your job as the person that you know I have the issue with? Just be like, "Well, okay, I see your issue. Mm -hmm. What if I do this?" Mm -hmm. You know, because that literally can like 
de-escalate an argument coming like li- right. we just had a conversation obviously it wasn't about going to the club but we had a conversation hey, about you know, that could have been who going to the club <laughs> <laughs> you didn't go to the club when we was 18 <laughs> yeah i did but <laughs> We had a conversation like that recently. Like, I felt like Tommy wanted to just harp on an issue. And I was like, okay, let's find the compromise for the issue and let's end this conversation because we're going around in circles of you being upset, but there is no like, there's no solution. So let's find a solution so we can stop talking about this. We did. We ain't fix that solution. We haven't. We haven't come to. <laughs> we had an agreement on a solution. Yeah, we did. We just not we have. Did. We just have not put the solution in place. Okay. But it also wasn't something like going out every yeah. weekend. So it's not like you had to stop doing something, right. or I had to stop doing something. Right, right, right. So it was just like we found a solution. We just have to put it in play. Yeah. But I, I just feel like she just the the sad part about it is Justin is expressing these things. And she doesn't have his back on it. And then she feels attacked when somebody is looking at the situation saying, no, you're wrong in the situation. And it's like, why feel attacked in that situation when what you saying goes against everything we're talking about? Mm-hmm. Dr. Pia told her that she was wrong. She she was like asking why. Mm-hmm. And that's what yeah. the, Justin, in all tens of person, was like, you're wrong. And she wasn't being during the conversation she definitely wasn't being neutral she definitely was leaning towards what you're saying doesn't make sense right and it's hard to be neutral right. when that's what you're what I'm saying, saying. That's what I'm saying. Sense. it's like what you're saying doesn't make sense and i can't be neutral in this in this situation just because no that's not how you do things like Y'all have had five weekends and you've gone out all five weekends. Right. Like that don't make sense. She be drinking. And that's the example that like I understand. You have to put in perspective. Okay, so we all we we work Monday through Friday, nine to five. Yep. You by the time you get off, you might be tired. You gotta eat something. It's almost, you know, rinse and repeat. You go to work. Come home, eat. It's about that time. It's almost time to go to bed. And so on the weekend, that's when you have your free time, you know? So dedicate some time to your spouse, especially in this new blossoming marriage. And I think that's what he was saying too. You know, I don't have no problem with you spending time with your friends, but what about spending time with me? Like Alexis was like, I don't want to be up under him 24 seven. That's the one thing, Dr. Pia, she was like, he ain't asking you to be under him 24 seven. That's impossible. Y'all gotta read between the lines. I don't, but, and, and that's what I was about to say. To go to that too. Okay, so then she said when she said, I don't know if I'm ready to be married to um Justin. It was because I don't know what kind we need to get to the root of what did you envision married marriage being like? Because she said she she thought it would be fun. Now I'm sorry. Marriage can be fun, but it ain't always fun. You ain't always <laughs> laughing and giggling out there bowling because doggone it, nine times out of ten, but before you get married, you got responsibilities any freaking way. You mm-hmm. definitely got responsibilities when you marry. So it ain't gonna be all fun and games when you get married. It just it's just not, it's not like when you're dating. But it's yeah. not like when you're dating. So I just took what she said though in this way because I had to look at it from a different thing. I mean, in this marriage, it's not fun because think about it, they come off of work, they go into production. They got to do things that the executive producers and producers are asking to do. And I think her, her turning out with her friends is just finding the time to be herself because she's around work. She's around Justin. She's around producers, production, come home and film. Oh, yeah. And they may get an off day. And she probably, well, on my off day, I want to go hang out. Granted, we all know she ain't spending no two hours in the club. You already went through that, right? Uh, but Justin is like, spinning to me cut let's cuddle let's hug justin wants to recreate the honeymoon when they had nothing else to do mm-hmm. she couldn't turn up on the honeymoon because her friends wasn't there mm-hmm. she had no other choice but to enjoy all the things that he did on the honeymoon and he got accustomed to what honeymoon he got accustomed to the honeymoon marriage and not the real life marriage mm-hmm. she got accustomed to the honeymoon marriage and then when they came home and they had their first argument she was like you know what i'm going back to me you know, so I'm going back to what I'm used to and what I'm used to is hanging out with the friends and doing all this. And again, she signed up for it. She should have known that. But again, 
she she feels stifled because Justin is there. But, but it's that's, gonna be like that. Gonna, but if, if you gonna be like that in marriage. That's what I was gonna say. If she hadn't married a stranger, even when if you marry somebody you know, in the beginning, it's gonna be you and this person because you're trying to get used to that person, you know, and you it will, it's it has to change. You can't go from hanging with your friends all the time. You, you just can't. You're married. That it it yeah. changes. It does. It changes, and I think that's what she doesn't understand, especially uh, so with the stranger. But when it's when we knew, you know, what I'm saying, I I no. But then she then she revert back to when they were arguing in the kitchen, and when the producer Krista stepped in. Oh my gosh, she, that was she, that was. She said, crazy too. "You why did you wait till I got blindfolded to tell me all this stuff?" Goes back to the conversation I had at the beginning. Why are you so vague? I ask you every day, is everything okay? You're still being vague, but now you feel more you feel more comfortable because I'm blindfolded mm-hmm. to share all this information with me. Basically, you made me look stupid on TV. Man, but she should have looked stupid on TV because it, it's like right. First off, she still didn't be 100 with him with the blindfold on. Nope. Like what is it? the thing is, she already said she doesn't want to be married to him. Or she don't think he's right for her. So what is he holding back for? Mm -hmm. You know, he has no reason to hold back now. He could take out his ring, say how he really feels, because at this point, you just some other girl. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, it, it, it is what it is on that. And it's like, why not be truthful to him? She's like, well, I want him to have his moment. No, it's like, if y'all are trying to be in a relationship and really trying to make this thing work like she says she she is, you have to be 100. And that's two times that he's asked her straight up for something, and she's lied to his mm-hmm. face. The first was at the dinner table, mm-hmm. and she was like, no, I don't have anything to say. And it's like, no, nah, you got something to say, because the way you said, no, I don't have anything to say. And then this one with the blindfold activity. It's like you're trying to protect him, and he's not asking for protection. When she said um, that mm-hmm. she thought that she was going to make a great wife for somebody, even if it wasn't for him, I was like, that's a dagger to the heart right yeah. there. Like, if I'm Artica, trying to give you everything. Artika, that's what I was about to say. For her to come and say, I held back, I said, well, dang, what she let out was enough <laughs> to hurt his heart. Because mm-hmm. what he said, it was like everything was a retort. I'm going to make somebody happy, even if it's not you. Bloop, bloop. She, her whole thing was a retort to what he said. And mm. listen to it. She talked in past tense. We mm. had a good time. I appreciate it. your family's <laughs> cool. I'm going to still be cool with them. <laughs> she said it like, it's over. Yeah. Yo, she said it. She did. She heard, she that, did. She heard that new heart. Now, this is where I got, I got crucified again by some people. I thought after the pole dance, I thought she was in a mood because she was drinking. I thought he might have got some that night if he hadn't waited for the blindfold. If he had said the blindfold situation, Justin might have got lucky. I know some of y'all about to crucify me in this chat. Mm-hmm. It's just my opinion. I thought he was, I thought she was on the way. I thought she was feeling some type of way that they was having a good time with the pole dance. And maybe Alexis is that great of an actress, actress, you know, and that's and she's that great of an actress that she was trying to protect herself and she just was doing the activity, going through the activity. She never intended to give Justin any, but I definitely knew after he started talking, when she was blindfolded, I'm like, bro, had any chance of getting something that night? He ain't getting it now. Your chance is zero right now, because she she offended, and she and she always says this, oh, I didn't really want to hurt him. I didn't really want to, like, you know you did hurt him, right? Right. That's what I'm saying. You know he's off him. already. <laughs> he's emotionally aware. <laughs> soft. That brother's soft. He's emotionally aware. <laughs> but nothing about that uh, quote-unquote performance on the pole made me feel like he was going to get anything. Like, they didn't even seem like she was trying to hype up even pretending to, like, want to be sexy for him or, like, just being goofy on the pole. It was just like, this is the activity that I've been tasked with, <laughs> and um, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Put all my... <laughs> do it for the vine. <laughs> Now, uh, I didn't understand the producer intervening. Like, the way the producer intervened, I thought they were fighting. Like, physically right. fighting. You know? And I was like, this is this is weird that she did that mm-hmm. for them just, you know, arguing with each other, essentially. 
it was probably like she's tired of hearing the same argument over and over because as production you have to listen to these stupid arguments all the time yeah. and if she's mm -hmm. their particular producer she was like sit down so we can stop having this argument right like right. find some new <laughs> but she like like put them both in the bathroom was like hey do 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 so i was like who and is this she, producer lady, man? Just... She, she, she was she like hey, she didn't, she said, All right, Lex. She didn't call her Lexus. All right, Lex, because so she has built a relationship. Uh, right, right. Like, this ain't the first time she did this. It don't it don't seem like it's the first time she done calmed them two down. It just to me it seemed like it's the time that she was there. All right, this is the time we hear y'all arguing during production time. We are at least gonna argue. Let's go because we can't film you in the bathroom. Let's come to the kitchen. Yeah. And let's have a conversation so we can at least at least get some TV done. Mm -hmm. I can get some work. I can say we did something. Yeah, but I just, I just think that was this whole episode for them. Um, it was just sad, you mm -hmm. know. It was it was sad that he expressed something and she's like fighting against it, mm -hmm. and it's and it's what you wouldn't expect a wife and a husband to fight about, you right. know, like anybody. Like you wouldn't expect your time spent with with your friends. To be more important than time spent with your your spouse, exactly. And uh, and I don't think she realized that's what he was crying out about. Mm -hmm. It's like you putting like he even said it. I think he's number two behind number three, really behind Newton and uh, Newton. her friends and her friends. And it's like <laughs> that's your husband, though. Oh, and you heard her say, you know, when Maya attacked Newton. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad Dr. Peel called out on that because it was like, well, he gave up Maya. Mm -hmm. You know, and she she's not looking at it from that standpoint. It's it's one of the most selfish things that you we've seen on, on that after episode. Party, she said on after party, she said Maya could have I mean Newton could have went to her mom. Her mom called and asked if Newton could come. And she was like, no, Newton can stay because her dog, his dog attacked my dog and Newton didn't do anything wrong. So she could have. It's a, not a punishment. It's a protection. It's a protection. Like, it's a protection. Like, she could have got rid of the dog. Both of them could have got rid of the dog. Truth mm. be told, both of them didn't have to bring their dogs there. And they could have built their relationship. But y'all said she probably would have found something else because she really don't like dude. So yeah. it would have been, been something. It would have been something else. But she didn't have to bring the dog there. And I, when I heard that, I'm like, yo, why do you keep saying this? And you didn't even have to bring your dog here, or you could have took your dog somewhere else. And this man had to get rid of his best friend, and you keep mm -hmm. you're not letting him live that down. Do you think right. the relationship is like Jamie and um, Beth that it's explosive, but they might still stay together, or is worse? No, nah, they. There's no way they're gonna stay together. I didn't think Jamie and Beth was gonna stay together though, because that one argument on the couch, I was like, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, but they like, yeah, I mean, it's. it's... When they said okay, I was like, okay, that makes sense. But I don't think Alexis and and Justin stay together because she's already said. First off, she don't like them. Secondly, Newton bit her. Uh, uh, Maya, bit, Maya her bit her dog. And then third, she can't hang out with her friends. Yeah. What the what the dude say? I just want to go out and do ratchet things <laughs> with my friends. <laughs> 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 you know, so it's, it's like three strikes and you out, man. She already got her out, so yeah. She's there's no way in the world Alexis is hanging out. No, there's no way in the world this this really. I think their relationship is done. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think he'll. I think he'll still. I don't know. I still see her giving him some somewhere down the line. I don't. In the pre, but I felt like in the preview, that's what they tried to say. I think someone. I, I don't know how they would get there. I don't know how they would get I there. I can't see how they would get there. Floppy drunk and be like, "Yes, yeah, my husband." But then they try. <laughs> that's what I'm about to say. She said on after party they tried. So she said on after party somehow they tried, but it didn't work out. But didn't he say that to the guys? He said that the problem was when he made a move. She was like a what you know, like wet noodle type of thing. Like she wasn't giving it back. Oh, I, hmm. I believe that's what he said. Man, look. He's I like, don't know, man. But I don't if know. all parties are willing, I don't know how there's a try. Yeah, right. If all parties are willing, I don't know how to try. Yeah. Oh, let me. See. She, she, she tried to figure out. I, I think she tried to say he couldn't, you know, rise to the occasion. That's what I want to say. He didn't get it up in time. <laughs> Why was it? Ain't no what was, what was that? Going on, huh? You might need some blue chew or something. I don't know. Don't even stop <laughs> I should get a get a sponsor, you know. Oh yeah, that's what he said. 
Justice said he tried to have sex with her and she just sits there. Yeah, that's awkward. That's awkward. That's a telling, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially the way she was on the honeymoon. Look, she don't want she don't want she don't want a guy who fly kites. She want a guy who wears some jeans and Tim's. I forgot about the and, and, uh, and, a, and a wife. Do you remember this song? It was uh oh, it was MC Light. Got a rough neck. <laughs> I want to have a rough neck. I did. I mean, I'm just makes you want a rough neck. Makes you want a rough neck. <laughs> makes you want a rough neck. As Tommy said, she don't want her dude soft. No, no, no literally no. or. But you know what? We call him soft when, it, when he called him soft, but when the camera off, he based up though. He he wouldn't soft when the, when, when the cameras ain't rolling. He got a little. Little basin with argument. This man cried in eleven episodes. <laughs> Twelve episodes. Like I, you know, I'm all for everybody crying, but this man here is emotional. Carl Thomas. That's why I'm gonna start calling that man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She he was resistant. I mean, he wants the intimacy. He wants it, and she's not giving it to him. And that's the biggest. That's the big issue in their relationship. He wants the intimacy now. And she's not giving it to him. And he wants to know. And the thing is, he wants to know why. Because if you go back and she was giving it back to him on the honeymoon, now they get home and ain't no intimacy happened. It's like nothing. He dried up. He realized that she don't like him. Right. She realized this process of giving it a go is harder than what she expected it to be. He doesn't do it for um, you know, because it's like we all we all know, hey, it has to be some type of initial attraction there, mm-hmm. you know, in order for anything to get the flowing. And so if that's that attraction is not there or you know, he's just too goofy for or is it's just not if, if whatever it is, it's not getting the juices flowing, it's not gonna work out anyway, mm-hmm. you know. And then on top of everything, y'all have conflict. Mm-hmm. <sighs> You know, nah, that ain't the time that you gonna, you know. So it's it's uh it's in a he's he's in a tough position. I don't know what he could do to like actually get out of this hole, but uh, yeah, like it's it's hard when he's one person don't want to be a part of it. Yeah, that's that's it, and he can't do that. So that sucks. Yeah, it sucks. Mm-hmm. Hey, but- I just didn't expect them to fall apart like this. <laughs> Right. At all. I thought they were actually going to be, you know, be able to kind of steer the ship and, and, and kind of excel at it, you know. Mm-hmm. That would have been a hell of a uh, success story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It would have been. <sighs> well, we'll see. Yep. Maybe, maybe you know, she wants somebody, maybe her and Morgan hook up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> somebody had said something about that. They, they tried to say. I think she liked. She him. might like, yeah. She don't like guys. Uh, I wasn't. Oh, but Justin, I think Morgan is still too, too um alpha for her. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I just think uh, I hated that that was the cause of, like, her being the cause of why her, Morgan and Ben having their conflict. You know. Yep. Yeah. Hey, but that's it, man. Thank y'all for being in the chat for jumping off. Yeah. Uh, Tommy Artiga, closing thoughts, man. Um, why, why, do you got anything to say? <laughs> man, this man, been say, no don't head. ask him because he'll get started. He, been <laughs> here, buddy. <laughs> he has been t- every time we hit mute, it's because he decided he needed to be in the conversation. <laughs> um, I don't have any closing thoughts, I've missed most of the actual speaking part of this. I was listening to y'all though from upstairs. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, <laughs> no, just uh, like, subscribe, and, and share. Make sure you guys like this video. Um, yeah. Oh, podcast coming <laughs> you out. Like you about to say something profane? I thought I was, but I didn't. I couldn't catch it. I didn't. I couldn't catch it. So um, Wednesday, we got a podcast episode coming out. We're talking about uh, intimacy. intimacy. Uh, we're trying to get our live going to talk about the talk about coach. And his uh, infidelity issues, um, you know, I was extremely sad about that because, you know, Celtics all the way. Um, yeah, subscribe to all our channels. August Love Story, Jack and Glenn, Talisa Ray, Chloe Johnson, Little Black Book, 90, 91. All of us, we all family. So, yeah. Yep, hit everybody up. 
Yeah, Talisa Ray. Stephanie Lee. Stephanie Lee too. Go to TalisaRay.com. Oh yeah, Stephanie um, Lee. I forgot about her. Make sure uh, go to TalisaRay.com. Make sure you get her books as well. Uh, her journal that she got going on, and hey, make sure you subscribe to the August Love Story podcast. It is rocking and rolling. It's good, 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 good content. Good content. Sure. Good stuff. Um, they do a great job. Um, once again, thanks for joining us on a taking the time out of your Sunday afternoon to spend time with us to talk about Married at First Sight. We appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for being in the chat, and we'll catch you guys a little bit later. Have a good night. Bye. Peace. Bye. That's when you were supposed to.